hey guys welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to be doing a video based off what you guys read from the title you already know what this video is about this video is about things that they don't tell you when you get pregnant i want to do this video because when i had zoe there was a lot of things that no one tells you um what you're going to be going through when you're pregnant and I had to find out the hard way. So today I'm gonna to share with you guys some of the symptoms and outcomes in and outs of when you get pregnant and things that people don't necessarily talk about during your pregnancy. It's kind of one of those things where people are just like, oh yeah, that does happen. And they don't tell you upfront, you know, oh, expect this, expect that until you're going through it. And they're like, oh yeah, duh, that happens. So before I jump into this video, please don't forget to click and subscribe. And if you want to be notified when I post a new video, please click that bell. I think it's on the opposite side of the subscribe button to be notified when I post a new video. So like I said before, I just want to look out for you guys, like, because nobody looked out for you, girl, and let you guys know the basically, let you guys know basically the in and out of symptoms or things that happen when you're pregnant people don't talk about this and I like to I like to start things on my channel where we talk about things that people normally won't talk about because they just feel like it's out of the norm or it's taboo but I mean we're all women well we're not all women but in pregnancy life we're all women who go through this and I feel like this is something that we should all share like information and since i have the information i feel like i should share it with you guys the first thing that's on my list and i think the reason why it's first because it's super annoying is called is discharge so normally when you're not pregnant you have this before you start your cycle or after your cycle and it's kind of for a couple of days or unless you're just struck with the worst cycle ever and you have it for seven to 14 days there's people out there who have a cycle for two weeks i feel sorry for them i don't have that that's horrible i wouldn't wish that on no one but before you start your cycle you have discharge well something that no one tells you about is when you're pregnant and about your second trimester i think that's when it starts you start to discharge and it's not like oh it's just a little some some no it's a lot of some some so you start to discharge and it's basically your body is just constantly cleaning itself out and also everything down there is getting ready for this baby to come through so you're constantly cleaning and when I say constantly I mean constantly like constantly so I am going through panty liners like crazy so the first time it happened to me I didn't think nothing of it so I wasn't wearing panty liners the first two months it was going on and I was just changing my undies three times a day because it was ridiculous. I would wake up and feel like I just pissed all of myself. So my advice is get some panty liners, non scented, thinner ones, they're comfortable, not nice to wear. The ones I wear, I can't remember the name, I'll leave a pic for you guys right there. They're very thin and they're easy to wear. They're comfortable and they don't um, irritate me. And sometimes you get a little irritated when you wear like a pad for too long. So I always change it maybe when I go to the bathroom. Like almost every time I go to the bathroom, I put a new one on. So that is one of the symptoms that happens when you're pregnant and it, don't, it doesn't stop until the baby comes out. And then even then you still have stuff to deal with afterwards. So yeah be prepared second trimester it's going to happen um the second thing is the braxton hicks contractions pregnant with your first child you're probably like well i don't get those i didn't get those either when i was pregnant with zoe um but now with the second baby i am definitely getting braxton hicks contractions they are happening almost once a day or once every other day um, one time they happen like three or four times that day um, they can be very mild like to where it kind of doesn't bother you or it can be medium where it's just like oh I'm cramping or it can be really strong to where you think you're actually in labor but you're not and I've had all three um, they're horrible <laughs> because sometimes a bit concerning that 
am I going into labor? Because, like, it's too early. But it's most of the time it's Braxton Hicks. And my doctor recommended for me not to panic because I've been panicking a lot. Um, is to go by the 411 rule. Let me see if I can remember. If you're having four more contractions within one hour and they're lasting a minute, each contraction is lasting a minute long. Yeah, so if you're having four more contractions in an hour and they're all lasting a minute long, then you're in labor. If not, you're good. It's just the Braxton Hicks. So another thing that a lot of people associate with pregnancy is vision loss. Um, not loss, like you go blind, but basically your vision gets worse. Um, it comes back to normal. I did experience that when I was pregnant with Zoe. Um, my contacts, it just felt like something was off like I could see but it was like my contacts wasn't as strong as they used to be but after I had Zoe and everything came back to normal it went back um this time I'm not really I think I experienced it more when I wore my glasses versus my contacts but it's not that bad and I know some people were saying like hearing loss is one of those things I don't know but I know the vision thing is a real thing <laughs> because it happened to me for my first pregnancy um and also just forgetting things oh gosh I already forget stuff before I got pregnant, so being pregnant just makes it worse. Um, this pregnancy hasn't been that bad because I don't really need to remember much, so therefore I'm not going to forget a lot. One of the fun things that happened to you, and it's not so fun, is your feet getting bigger, not fatter, but literally growing a size. Um, so during your pregnancy, your feet kind of gets bigger, and after your pregnancy, they never really go back. So before I had Zoe, I used to wear a size seven and a half to eight and a half. Don't ask me how. I can't even fit a seven and a half anymore. Um, and I have to wear eight and a half. I can't even fit an eight. I have to wear eight and a half. So your feet does grow when you're pregnant and they don't revert back. It's just one of those things. They're not curls, honey. You're not going to straighten them and spray them with water and they don't shrink back. They, it don't happen that way. They stay as big. So if you already have big feet, they just gonna get bigger um that's just something that happens oh my god this next thing is a 24 hour thing um it's the heat the heat wave it's like you know when you think you have menopause and it's a constant thing like i know you know i've seen someone who has menopause and how it affects them of like one one moment they're okay and the next moment they're like dying from heat this is 24 7 i literally just feel like i'm hot right now i'm okay because the sun hasn't come to this side of my apartment so there's no sun coming in but about two o'clock i feel like this apartment is like a heat box anywhere i go even when i was at my mom's house i was just like it's so hot in here she's like the air is on 72 i was like we need to bring it down because it's so hot I have to sleep with the fan. I have a ceiling fan. Gray just bought me a new fan because I'm dying. The air stays on 69 in here. I cannot deal with the heat. I wake up drenched in sweat. It's not even funny. This baby adds to your temperature. You're constantly hot. It was 40 degrees when I took Zoe to school. I walked out with a dress on and sandals because that's how hot I was in this house and it felt so good. This winter has been the best because I haven't been cold. It's been feeling really good to me. May the one, the next thing is something that's just, it's kind of embarrassing, but it's true is you develop more gas while you're pregnant. Um, so the farts and the burps, I call them farts. You can call them whatever, past gas, whatever you feel is cute enough for you. Um, they come a lot more frequently and harshly than normal um, because you're not only just like passing gas for you, it's also for that baby. And depending on what you eat can also obviously affect the smell and how often you pass gas, but expect to be delivering that gas a lot more um, throughout your pregnancy. So if you're somewhere that you're not comfortable passing gas, guess what? In your third trimester, what I've learned, you can't even hold it. So you might as well let it out and just be ashamed because I can be at the grocery store just walking and it can come out and I'm just like, there is nothing I can do about that. 
I can't even hold my own farts. So, and the same thing with burps. You can't hold it. By this time, you can't, you can't. You just gotta let it out. So the last two things that people don't tell you about pregnancy is, you know, they do tell you, oh, pregnant women pee a lot, they pee a lot. Yeah, that's true, we do. Like, you really, we really do. Like, I just went to the bathroom and I have to go to the bathroom again because the baby is constantly pushing on you. But they don't tell you is after you have this baby or sometimes during your pregnancy, how constipated you can be. Um, constipation is not pretty. It's not fun. It It's not comfortable. Um, people may think that, oh, you can live life and be constipated. It is the worst feeling ever. And after I had Zoe, I did get constipated because I don't know what it is that makes you get constipated when you after you have a baby, but it's horrible. So I suggest to take fiber pills. I have some like fiber chewable um, things that I take. You can take like six of them a day. So two of them at one time. Um, and I'm already taking them now so that everything can be consistent and good so when I after I have the baby it's something that's already into my routine because it wasn't fun it was horrible um you're already having a hard time adjusting after having a baby so being constipated is just one of those things that you don't want to deal with after having your child um so I just feel like incorporating fiber into your diet and some fiber pills into your diet will help you after you have your bundle of joy so that way it's already in your system and you're good to go because if you're trying to take them and you're already constipated there is no point because the only thing it's going to do is make you want to poop on the poop that's already there you got to get the poop out first to get the rest of the poop out and it doesn't help so start taking them before you give birth and during your pregnancy so that you can already have it in your system so everything will be good to go. So those are the things that people don't tell you when you get pregnant. Um, if there's some things that I left off of this list, please, you can leave, you can leave it down below. Um, let everybody know, share some of your stories, your um, tips and things like that. Um, I just like doing things like this because I feel like it's always fun and interesting to hear what some of your comments are on things that I say in these type of videos or what's on my list. So if you love this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below and subscribe. And I can't wait to chat with you guys in my next video. Bye guys.